Well, look what just arrived. It's the big R gears that I've been waiting for. These are 13 to one. They are, I would guess you would consider a premium gear set. Um, I think they retail it in Australia at around $80 a set. Um, the packaging is really nice. It comes in a little hard case and you would expect nice packaging if you are paying a premium price for a gear set. Probably double the price of SHS gears. Now, I'll pull the bevel out first. Now, the bevel gear is a two-type machined slash cast gear set. So, I'm going to assume that the lower portion of the bevel gear is the cast part, and that is to reduce wear on the pinion gear. And because these are two pieces pressed together, the other part will be the CNC machined part. So, that'll be interesting. Uh, then we have the spur gear. So you'll see it has a free float axle and bearings either side. So you can see there, it spins quite nicely. So it will be interesting to see, because I am going to push this gear set. I'm going to push it quite hard actually. I want to see if I can get these bearings to pop. Ideally I don't want them to pop because I don't really want to waste my money. but. I do want to push them to see how far I can get them to go without breaking. And then we have the sector gear. Again, it's got a free float axle. It only has a bearing on one side, so the cam side or the lobe side doesn't have a bearing, just one bearing on the side. So I just quickly want to mention the sector gear. So we have the big R sector gear and then you have your SHS sector gear. Now, looking at the sector bearing, as they call it, it's obviously going to have some, some sort of impact to the pickup and the release of the tappet. Uh, how much, I'm not sure, but I'm going to definitely have a look to see what the difference is between the two. I'm thinking there's definitely going to be something there. How much? Um, I guess we'll find out. Because uh, I have seen a little bit of to and and froing on the internet saying that it is a delay egg chip, the bearing. And I've seen other people say it's not. So I guess we'll find out once and for all. So I'll do a bit of a comparison and put some photos up so uh, we can see if there is a difference to the pickup and the release points of the tappet between the two gears. So the gearbox that's going in uh, is this one. This comes out of the uh, Phantom Extremis build that I did. So this has 13 to one gears. It was running 25,000 RPM motor. We're gonna put the big R gears in and we're going to also um, increase the motor speed to 35,000 RPM. So that'll be a good test for this gear set. Also, while I'm at it, because uh, I had good results with the one piece cylinder, especially with consistency. So we'll be putting a one piece cylinder in also with a hybrid nozzle. So currently this one is sitting at around 24 rounds a second average and it's hitting 340, 350 FPS. So what I'll most likely be doing it anyway is dropping the spring rate. Oh, no, actually, maybe I won't because uh, of the motor. So I'll be playing around with it anyway. And I, what I'm trying to do is uh, get a high rate of fire, but uh, I only want the FPS to be around 300 uh, so I can go play at the fields that are close to me. So, uh, nothing else, I think there is nothing else I need to mention about these gears. Um, but you guys, I'll, I'll put the full build video up when I once I've done it. Then you guys will be to have a look, see what happens, and hopefully they don't explode. But these are really high quality gears. Compared to SHS, which is always a mixed bag of did I get fakes? 
um, and the quality of SHS because so many people are ripping them off and putting fakes out there sometimes. So I have everything unassembled and I notice there's damage to the back of the piston here. So it was blown out. Normally that's a sign of bad AOE. Uh, I do spend a lot of time making sure my AOE is 100%. So it was a bit of a shock, but then I noticed there's damage to the inside of the piston there, which you should be able to see. Also, there is a deformed coil on here. Maybe if you can see, it's actually that coil there. So quite clearly, inside the box, as it's cycling, as the piston's coming back, the retainer's not holding straight, and the back of the piston is either striking uh, part of the spring or it's striking the face of the retainer which is a bit disappointing. Um, and just looking at the retainer, this doesn't seem to be any damage, but there is a bit of a shine on there. So it's probably a combination of both. So the issue is with this Phantom Extremist receiver, there's no buffer tube bolt system. I'm not sure exactly what they call it, but where the long bolt feeds through the back of the buffer tube and into the spring retainer which is sitting inside the gearbox and as you tighten it that will pull that up against the back of the gearbox and hold it tight because I haven't been able to do that clearly the retainer has been moving around and has caused that damage to the piston but I do have a fix for that I do have a couple of these I'm not I'm not sure what the exact name is but they are called a retro arms CNC screw QSC I don't know what QSC stands for, but I'll definitely be utilizing one of these for the rest of this build. So that's what it looks like. And what that does is it screws into the back. So the retainer will sit in the, the gearbox. And this here screws into the back of the retainer. Like so. And it actually butts up against the rear of the gearbox and holds that retainer straight. So that's what I'll be utilizing to uh, combat that problem. So a bit unfortunate that that uh, I've wasted that piston, but it's things like this to help you learn. So uh, I suppose it's been a good thing.